what have you made of uh, the, the back and forth over the last couple of weeks between Tyson Fury and Dylan White, uh, Rick? They've been exploding on each other, so to speak, on social media. Dylan White is obviously mandatory there. We don't know how that situation will play itself out. Uh, but we've spoken about Dylan White many a times, me and you, Rick. But he's yeah. kind of had uh, a lot to say about Tyson Fury and vice versa over the last two weeks. Have you seen much of that? I have seen little bits, do you know what I mean? I mean, Tyson's Tyson's Tyson, you know what I mean? And to be honest, and Dillian, um, it's not Tyson's fault why Dillian has not got its shot. I think it's more politics than than anything, you know what I mean? He, I mean, I mean, let's have it right, Dillian can't. What Tyson has done since he's he's come back and you know his fights were wilder and that I don't think Dillian's um, having a pop at Tyson because who, who can have a pop at Tyson with what he's with what he's done you know what I mean but uh, I think it's just a bit of frustration on Dillian's part which I think Tyson would probably say himself he totally gets you know Dillian seems to be waiting forever for his shot and now it looks like you know Tyson might be having to do another wilder fight which means Dillian gets put on a back burner. I think it's just frustration, you know, and it's been funny how they talk about the spars that they had together and, you know, and, and all this. But, I mean, it, it's, it's, it's interesting. And, you know, um, but I just think it's frustration. And I, as I mentioned earlier, I'm a British fight fan. You know what I mean? You know, I, Dillian knocked out my heavyweight Lucas Brown, you know, in, you know, with a great performance. And that should have been, you know, the... Um, the springboard that catapulted him, you know, onto the world scene. And I know he's on the world scene, but he's still he's still sat on fucking third base, and he the poor poor, poor sod, you know. But uh, but no, it has been interesting. And um, but I think Dillian needs to keep doing things like that. Tyson won't take offence. Tyson loves all that stuff. But you know, he needs to air his frustration because I think I think we all agree with him. Mm. Do you like the fight, Rick, between Fury and White? What do you think about the fight itself? I would rather, no, no disrespect to, to Deontay Wilder, and whatever they've agreed in the contract, they've agreed, and nothing we can do about that. But, I mean, and this is no disrespect to Deontay Wilder. We saw the first fight where Tyson had hard lines. He should have probably got that at the point. The second fight, he went out there and, and bashed him. Why, on God's earth, would we want to watch that again? No disrespect intended. But, Billy White, who's... You know, earn his dues. He's a British fighter. He'll be a Brit fight, Tyson. A Brit fighting a Brit again. You know, his confidence is, Dillian's confidence is sky high. Tyson's is sky high. That, that's, that's the fight for me. But, you know, if a contract has been signed, poor Dillian is going to have to just hold his horses unless something can get sorted out. But I'd rather, no disrespect to Deontay Wilder, I'd rather see Dillian fight Tyson than the third Wilder fight all day long. I think everyone would. Mm. Um, yeah, it's an interesting situation. And I think <coughs> if Dylan White was guaranteed the winner of Wilder and Fury 3, I think he could make his peace with that. But where they're trying to make Joshua Fury, it just kind of complicates everything yeah. to where Dylan, Dylan White is. So we'll have yes. to wait and see with that. We'll have to see, unless um, nine times out of ten, which happens in, in these cases, you know, the fighters with all the belts fight each other, like Tyson and AJ. You know what, they might agree something where they vacate one of the belts, where Dylan can step in and fight it, which um, Dylan then would get his dream at fighting at the world title. But I think Dylan wants to fight the man. I wanted to fight the man, and I got the chance to fight Kostya Zou. But, I mean, Dylan doesn't want to probably doesn't want to win his world title by fight winning a vacant title or you know, somebody, do you know what I mean, Coogan? Because nine times out of ten, we'll say, poor Dillian has been waiting here, yeah, we'll vacate one of the belts, he can fight for the vacant one. But Dillian, I think, wants to fight, he wants to fight Tyson. He wants to fight the best, doesn't he? So even though he'd get his title shot, you know, we have to see it. I mean, that, that's nine times out of ten what always happens. Kostya Zou won the, won the undisputed title versus Zab Judder. But then he vacated all the belts, so I only fought for the for the IBF. So, but I wanted I wanted to fight the man, you know. So, I'm I'm assuming, Rick, that when you're at that level, boxers don't want to win a world title for a vacant title or by email. They want to be the best person in the weight. 
Yeah, the man, well, not necessarily the best, the man, yeah, the man, you who, know, I mean, they want the to be man who, the man who has the belt. Yeah. You know, you know what I mean? You know, you know, and then all of a sudden, I'm not fighting the man who's got the belt. He's, he's passed it to, to Joe Bloggs, who's just behind him, and I've got to fight him now. You know what I mean? It was like, when I won the WVU title, which was like a small, um, a small version of the world, the world title, if you like, but I won the WVU. Jason Rollins was a WVU champion, and I went to fight Jason. But I think he's I think his bulldog bit his hand off or something something like that, didn't he? So then I fought the vacant one against Tony Pet. But I didn't feel like I'd won the title. Even though it was the WBU title. I didn't think I'd won the WBU title till I fought till I beat Jason Rowland. Mm. And that's the the predicament that Dylan would probably find himself in. Mm. He'd end up fighting for the world title and winning it. But you know, you want to be the man who beat the man. I think it's going to be a very interesting period for heavyweight and boxing. And don't forget, don't forget Cougs. Don't forget Cougs. It's a bigger payday against Tyson than whoever he fights for the vacant. Absolutely. That's a massive fight. Fury, Fury and, that is, massive and at the end of the day, that's why we go pro. To be the best, to win world titles, get the money and provide for your family. Mm. And I absolutely agree. And absolutely agree. So what's your plans for the rest of the day, Rick? Uh, nothing really. I've got uh, my son coming around in about uh, half an hour. going to do a bit of training with, um, with Campbell. Um, and then nothing, just a uh, quiet night, put my feet up. I mean, the lads have all started back in the gym this week, which uh, the health and fitness gym isn't open now, obviously, but I mean, for elite athletes, which is what professionals are, it's how they earn the money. So I've been in the gym this week. I've enjoyed getting back to, as I mentioned earlier, a bit of normality, you know what I mean? Going to the gym every day, you know, doing your job, being in work, being able to see family, friends, and then at weekend going for a few sherbets. So I think uh, I'm quite happy where... Uh, well, it is now. I'm seeing my kids. I'm in the gym with the lads. I'm training Campbell. I can go for a pint. I can go on an holiday in a, in a few weeks' time, you know. So, uh, it's, it's good at the minute from where we've come from. But I think we've all just got to be sensible because I think my head would fall clean off my shoulders if another second batch come in and they put us in lockdown again. Mm. Oh, my God. You know, uh, I think it's great for everyone. It wouldn't be worth living, would it? But, you know, but life is good. All, uh, all good at the minute, mate. Good to hear, good to hear. Well, listen, I'm not going to take uh, too much more of your time, Rick. I appreciate you talking to us and also all the way through kind of this period of uh, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll call it that. But appreciate your time over that period anyway, Rick. But, um, no worries, no worries. Uh, Do get me time, you know that. Hopefully we'll catch up again soon, mate. All right, buddy. Good to speak to you, mate. Thank you very much, Ricky Hatton. Nice one, take it easy. Thanks, Rick.